video we're going to go through producer surplus. Now, uh, a couple of points that we should know first. When the price exceeds the marginal cost, a firm receives the pr producer surplus. That is kind of like profit. We can think of it as profit. For now, uh, producer surplus is the price received for a good minus its minimum, uh, minimum supply price or the marginal cost summed over the quantity sold. Uh, it is measured by the area below the market price, which is this red red line and above the supply curve which is the blue line summed over the quantity sold. Producer surplus for the market is the sum of all producer surpluses of all the individual producers in the market. And these last three points is something I will go through right now. So uh, Wendy's is willing to pr produce the 50th burger uh, for their marginal cost. And we'll just get a color so the, here's the 50th burger and their marginal cost is ten dollars so they're willing to make uh, the, their 50th burger for the, their marginal cost of ten dollars uh, they get a surplus of five dollars at in this situation because when these producer surplus from the 50th burger is the price which is fifty dollars minus uh, marginal cost which is ten dollars so that's where they get the surplus of five dollars now, Wendy's is actually interested in making a hundred burgers because the hundredth burger cost them only fifteen dollars to make at this price, which is equal to the market price, of course. So they'll be like probably breaking even at, at that point. But that's not the that's not what I'm. I really want to focus on. What I really want to focus on is producer surplus. So we found out that uh, at fifteen dollars a burger, um, Wendy's is willing to make a hundred hundred burgers. Uh, at fifteen dollars for burgers, uh, Arby's is willing to make fifty burgers. So the producer surpluses of these two uh, these two producers is actually this this blue part that I'm highlighting right now, or this blue triangle, and one for Arby's. And uh, when we add up Arby's and Wendy's, they just make up the market supply because they're the only two suppliers for burgers in the in the market. And I'm really getting some really bad lag here, but that's okay. So yeah, so we found out what the producer surplus is. The producer surplus is just meaning this uh, blue highlighted part that I just highlighted. So let's just note that down. This is our producer surplus. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's just find let's just learn some more so recap at $15 a burger the producer surplus uh, for the economy is the area under the market price which is this red line and above the market supply curve this is summed over 150 burgers because we get 50 burgers from Arby's and 100 burgers from Wendy's so it's summed over 150 burgers sold okay now uh, now something about uh, my formula here, how we calculate the producer surplus is using this blue triangle. So let's just take one of these as an example. So uh, you can see that it's base times height times over two. So let's just find our base for Wendy's is 100. It's 100. And our height is, is 10 because we take 15 uh, minus 5, well that's 10 divide that by 2, uh, then that gives us uh, $500 inside the producer surplus. Uh, because how, well, when we do base times height, that really gives us a square, right? The area of the square. So the area of the square like that. So we just get this part too. So we, so then the, the base is actually uh, on the x-axis. So we go 100 across, that's our base and we the height is just from 5 to 15 which is which gives a difference of 10 we take up take 100 times 10 that gives us a thousand but a thousand is the area of the whole square but we just want half of that square so we divide that by two to get 500 dollars for the producer surplus and uh, that's not too difficult so the producer surplus for the area for or producer surplus from uh, the market is the area under the market price and above the supply curve summed over 150 burgers yeah right I think I already told you that uh, the red areas so let's just highlight in the red areas uh, change back to my highlighter change this to red and um, 
yeah, let's just get rid of this black line. I don't really need that. I was just making a, making a statement. So I'm just going to highlight this red and explain it a bit. This computer just got to stop lagging. So almost done. Okay, so now we highlight all the red areas. Now, what the red areas are, they're actually the cost of producing the burgers sold. So remember in the last video where we did consumer demand, we had, I think we had a red area as well, a red area and then a green area. And I said that the whole thing was, well, the green area was actually the discount for the consumers and the red area was the part that they have to pay. Well, we have the same situation here. Uh, this red area is the part that the, the the producers have to pay, and this this blue part is actually their discount. And uh, when we are talking about producers, the discount actually translate in well, in my point of view, the discount actually translate to the profit for the for the producers because this. This red part is the amount that they have to shell out, and this this blue part is actually what they're selling at. So this blue part is actually their profit. So the producer surplus is the value of the of the pizza. Where did I get pizza from? Uh, so is the value of the burger. Stupid tablet. So the producer surplus is the value of the burger sold in excess of the cost of producing it. And the cost is our red area and the producer surplus is the blue area. And that's all you need to know about producer surplus. In the next video, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to just ponder about the question, is the competitive market efficient? But that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.